So we're done with brain anatomy and um, we focus deeper into the brain now in order to see how does actually the information travels from the one part to the other. For example, in what form does the visual stimulus that I may have travels through my brain in order to, to be translated into behavior afterwards? We will start for very fundamental, uh, the very fundamental uh, unit of the nervous system, and uh, this is of course the neuron. There are several kinds of, of neurons, but not all of them look exactly like that. However, the basic features we are going to talk about are very are common to everything. So, starting from the left to the to the right side, uh, we go to the dendrites are these branches here uh, and have specific re receptors that uh, receive signals from neighbor neurons. Then we go to the soma, which is uh, in which um, we spot the genetic information, the DNA. Then we jump to the axon. Uh, through this, the information passes in order to go to the terminal branches. And on the axon, there is the myelin sieve. The myelin sheath is a fatty insula insulating cover that protects mainly the neuron from its environment and, and very importantly, speeds up the transmission uh, of information, the transmission of the, sig of the signal through the neuron. Any damage of uh, the myelin can uh, dis uh, disrupt this uh, signal transmission and can result into a range of problems. And the very typical uh, case is the disease of multiple sclerosis. Probably you, you have heard about that before. So the myelin sheath is organized into nodes. These, uh, 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 these nodes are called round here nodes and the signal basically jumps from the one node to the other and uh, this makes the signal, the signal transmission faster. And uh, when the signal makes it to the end, then it passes from the terminal branches to the next uh, neuron and probably it activates the next neuron. So I'm talking all this time about signal and signal. The form of the signal, the type of the signal is actually electric signal, electric impulse, um, and uh, it's called action potential. All right, so let's go deeper. Uh, let's take the previous situation we talked about that I see a snake and I react. And my reaction when I see the snake, of course, for, and for most of the people I think here, is to run. So from the point that I receive the image until the point I react, there is a chain of neurons that are activated and the signal traveled through the neurons in my brain, turning a biological process to behavior. So, it, if you think about it, it's amazing that the sum of some electric signals can create fear or can create other emotions, right? Signal transduction is, is the main process that conveys uh, this, chain, this chain reaction, but let me give you the, the definition of signal, uh, signal transduction. It is the transmission of molecule, a molecule, actually it's not molecules, it's molecular signals, let's say, from the neurons exterior to the interior. And in the following slides, I will try to wrap everything up for you and to show you a step-by-step -step process. So, the first important term to explain uh, is the membrane potential. This is a simplified model of the neuron that we saw before. This is the cell's membrane that separates the internal from the external environment. The interior of the neuron is negatively charged while the exterior is positively charged. So, the membrane potential in a resting state, this means when the neuron is not activated, is uh, for humans, is around uh, minus uh, 70 millivolt. And it's called resting potential. When the input signal from the other neurons is too low, then the neuron will not activate. This, what you can see here in the graph, are unsuccessful neuron activations. But when the signal is high enough, then we have a neural activation and you can see we can see 
um, a rapid increasing from uh, negative uh, 70 to positive 40 millivolts. And after the neuron fires, as we say, after the neuron activates, then the membrane potential decreases again until it balances back to minus 70 millivolt. The question now is how does the neuron decide to fire? How does the neuron um, is active, decides to be activated or not? So here's our neuron, all right? It has to make a decision if it fires or not. And here are the neurons that offer input signal. Our neuron, let's say, simply takes the, input, the sum of the input signals, and if the result is high enough, if it passes a threshold, for example, then it fires. Otherwise, it doesn't fire. Actually, it's all or nothing. To summarize up to that point, because I know it's a bit complex process, uh, the neuron receives input signals. If the signal passes the threshold, it causes ion channels to open, and as a result, the membrane potential, as we saw before, if you remember, increases rapidly from minus 70 to plus 40. So, meaning that the internal of the neuron from a negative, as you remember, it was negative in the beginning, it turns into positive. So, the, this current, this signal passes through the neuron, speeds up in the axon due to the myelin sheath we, we talked before, and uh, it ends up in the terminal branches. And there, the signal causes the neurotransmitter release. Now you'll tell me, what is neurotransmitters? All right, neurotransmitters are, let's say, chemical messengers that transmit a message from a neuron across here, this synapse, this gap, because there is no exact touching point from the one neuron to the other. So from the one neuron, they, uh, they are transmitted to the, um, uh, to the next. And looking closely, uh, this gap between those two neurons, we can see, actually, if we zoom in, we can see this. This is the terminal branch of the first cell, and this is the, dendri the dendrite of the second cell. And when the action potential reaches the terminal branch, it causes neurotransmitter um, release. So these messengers here, uh, as you can see, uh, they cross the synapse, they bind, into onto the receptors of the uh, of the other neuron and they unlock the ion channels that we talked about before in order for the ions to pass through the membrane in the cell and make maybe the um, the next neuron to fire for every task we complete even for the very simple ones thousands of neurons need to work properly and collaborate, right? And uh, neurons form very complex connections that may differ from the one person to another. So if I want to be honest with you, the example with the chain that I showed you earlier too, where is the cursor? Yeah, here. The example with the chain, uh, it's just a simplification. Um, just, it's just a tool just to realize that how that the information flows in the brain from the moment of the stimuli up to the moment uh, of the behavior. So what happens in reality is a much more complex process. And in fact, neural chains is a metaphor for neural networks, for complex neural networks. Like this one, you see that they're activated here. And uh, these neural networks exist and they have the ability to change, to be rewired. And the ability of the brain to rewire is called neuroplasticity. So the brain rewires after learning, after activities, after new experiences, and every single activity that you choose to complete in your day changes accordingly your brain. So even after this session, I'm pretty sure your brain has changed a lot. Thank you.